Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Jesus is having a question and answer group session, filmed on the 12th of July 2014 in Monkeray, New South Wales, Australia. How do you feel about the material today? Can I just ask how, how you guys feel? If we can have some mics that are there. Yeah, just a reflection, I think. Yeah. I look back across maybe some of the notes and like me, I'll probably look back at some of the notes that I made today and some of the things that, particularly in the times that I wanted to go to sleep or get to yeah. avoid listening to. But. We're going to go through your homework Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday are all about discussing with you all of your homework. So, so there won't be any new material discussed with you Thursday and Friday. It's all going to be a regurgitation of your homework. Come down to the next. It's a bit hard for me to see everyone without looking above everyone. Yeah. Uh, because you're building day by day, does that mean I should, we should have our homework done by tomorrow morning, all of it? Um, my suggestion is the homework for today, I would try to finish by tomorrow because you're going to have more homework tomorrow. Oh, but <laughs> right? it will build also as well on what we've got today. Yes, it will build on today, yes. Um, every day is a building on the previous day, the way we've planned it out. Um, tomorrow is a lot about understanding yourself. So. To understand yourself, you firstly need to know where you're at right now. And so today's homework, if you think about it, has a lot been about where you're at right now. So if you can focus on looking at where, having a sincere look tonight and in the morning, having a sincere look at where you are right now, have a sincere look about your desire, your will, the way you've been exercising your will, and whether you want to change that. You know, have, have a good look at those things. Yeah. Um. There, I'm not sure if this is the right time to ask. Yep. Um, but there was just one, um, it was quite a simple thing, but something I uh, I didn't get about um, will and... But, um, will versus willpower? Yeah, what exactly was the definition of will? Because I understood willpower and I wrote it down, but will, I didn't really get what exactly you mean by will and how it relates to desire. And, but I should ask that now or later? Well, I feel Mary did answer that in her talk, actually. Okay. But let's regurgitate it a little. Do you want to do that? Because it, it, does everyone have a bit of problem with that, or, or is it just an individual issue? Uh -oh. no? Everyone's. Well, like, can I say, your will is your soul-based emotional passion and desire to do something. Oh, okay. Your willpower is your intellectual force to avoid the doing of something. Passionate desire to do something, basically. Yep. A desire to do something. Okay. A passionate, soul-based, emotional desire to do something. So, for example, if I can give an example in this situation that was going on with the guys. Like, you wanted to believe that you were loving, right? But when you replied back to Paige, there was a, just a passionate desire in you to just give it to her. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> to just say, I'm not having any of this. You're being unloving with me. This is wrong. You know, that was the real, that's the will, that's the will, that's the will, will being used. It's dependent on desire. Though. Yeah. It's, it is a desire. Now, now, Christiana didn't allow herself to fully engage that process because she, because her judgment of that was, well, that would be a bit bad if I'd done that. So what she did instead is she couched it in a lot of nice flowery terms and, you know, and just tried to do it real softly, right? That's her will power being used to try to control her will. Her will was that she just wanted to give it to them, right? Her will power has been exercised to, oh, don't give it to them because that won't go down very well, right? So what I'll do instead is I'll just, you know, say some words, manoeuvre it a bit so that it sounds okay, hopefully. You're keeping it, you're kind of manipulating the will. Really. Yeah, you're manipulating, <laughs> the will power is being exercised to manipulate the real feeling that's there. You, so so for, for Christiana, she would have been better off going, no, my real feeling is I just want to shove this back down their throats. <laughs> no, that, that's my real feeling. 
and she would have been better off just feeling how strong that real feeling was. Wow, that's a pretty strong feeling, you know, like I would just want to go over there and ah, at them, you know, that's how I feel. And, and that's the emotion that comes out of the person too, by the way, in that feeling. So that's the emotion that everyone who's on the receiving end will feel. So, so even though the person's got a nice smile on their face, even, the feeling coming at you is like one of them, you just get hammered and attacked, right? If you're sensitive to that, that's what you'll feel. So, so when your will is being used, you'll feel this underlying feeling, you know, and, and it can be positive or negative, right? So the will can be used positively or negatively, as Mary pointed, to the, pointed out today. But the will power is used to suppress the will, to, to make it sound good or look good or be a bit facade or meet some addictions or any of those kind of things. Is that, can you see the difference? Yeah. 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 Thanks for that. No worries. And, uh, and the problem that we face is most of us are trying to control our will because we're pretty embarrassed about what our real really is. Right? So the average guy, the average guy is quite sexually charged, ha ha has got a lot of issues with women in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of wanting approval, acceptance, attention, sexual approval, attention and so forth. And so he's often projecting sexually at women all the time. That's the average guy. Right? Now, he doesn't want all those women to feel like he's doing that. <laughs> so what does he do? He says, oh, I'm just a friendly guy or I'm just a... You know, he, use, he uses now his willpower and also a lot of facade-based activities to prove to everyone around him, including himself, that he's not as bad as what he really feels inside of himself. He'd be better off going, yes, basically, I just sexually projected every woman I meet and I've got a problem. Right? He'd be far better off doing that. But he doesn't do that because he feels bad about that. He feels judgment about that. So what he does is then uses his willpower to control or force his will to do something completely different. But that doesn't help him because it, it doesn't change his will. It only forces his will into a direction using power. And that's not going to work in the long run. Right. So Matt? In that case, AJ, do we use very little willpower in the sleep state and mostly just exercise our will? Yep. As it really is? Correct. For the majority of us in our sleep state, we are much more open to using our will rather than our willpower because we've given up the facade of our willpower. So what that means is things that you think you w you'd like to do in the awake state but you would never do it because you'd be too embarrassed that anybody knows, you will probably do it in your sleep state. Right? And so that's your facade? Uh, anyway. Yes. Yeah, so, so the problem we have here on earth is that it, it, we haven't given up the facade, whereas in the, in the spirit world, oftentimes, we, we've blown away the facade because we just think, well, there's no point having a facade anymore. Everybody knows how I really feel, so I might as well just go and do it. And then we do. We do just go and do it. So you guys who want to have sex with every woman you meet, in the sleep state, that's probably what you're doing. Right? You're just not doing it in your awake state because you, your wife wouldn't like it or you know, you'd feel bad about yourself you know, or you wouldn't be able to maintain your facade that you're a nice fella anymore or whatever it is. And this is why we have to really change rather than try to manufacture change. Because real change will cause us to stop that behaviour. Manufactured change will only cause us to create a facade. Yeah. Real change will allow us to make the real change so that it affects both states, the sleep and the awake state. You, you guys, if you want, you can leave. I'll just uh, switch you guys off. Just mute you both. And you can take those both up to Eagle or up the back there. Yep. Good day, thanks. So I might as well stand up and move these chairs out of the way. I'll talk a few more minutes and then we'll be off, all right? Fire so, away. Jesus, that means that for the heterosexual men, there are as many of, and I'll include myself in that, women who are willing to behave like that as well. Correct. It does. 
is exactly right. Yeah. So, you know, on Earth, we have a lot of what I would classify as social norms, facade-based norms that we've created to make what we believe, uh, to get what we believe is approval in society. In the spirit world, approval in society um, is very rarely honoured because, because everybody can see what you really want to do. And so in the sleep state, most people finish up doing exactly what they want to do. So, so for example, many of you ladies, while you might not be addicted to sex, you are addicted to sexual approval. So how do you get sexual approval without having sex? It's a bit hard, isn't it, without having some kind of sexual energy flow from one to another to get sexual approval. So yes, you are accepting sexual energy from other people. Now, in God's eyes, that's sex. Right? I was listening to a show the other day, weren't we, where somebody, it was a Christian show, where somebody was claiming that oral sex was not sex from, God, from the Bible's perspective. Okay, well, what's this? <laughs> this is pretty interesting. Any... In, from, God, from God's perspective, any flow of sexual energy is sex. That's why I said in the first century, if you looked at a woman so as to have a feeling that you would like to have sexual relationships with her, you have already had one. Just then, by having that feeling. That feeling flowed out of you and into her, if she was open to feeling it. And that's a sexual interaction. Every sexual interaction you have that's not with your soulmate is going to damage your soul and the soul of the other person. That's how God created us to be. Yeah. Now, I suppose a lot of people feel that that's refining the point quite fine, but God refines the points quite fine. Yeah. And you'll actually, when you appreciate that, you'll actually like it, actually you get to the point where you go, wow, it's such an amazing system. God designed the two soul halves to be together, you know. Isn't that wonderful? Well, we wouldn't think it's wonderful if we think at the time that we'd like to have sex with lots of different people. We're not going to think it's wonderful then, probably. But yes, most of us are heavily in addiction and we don't care when we're in our sleep state about that. We just go and get our addictions back. In our awake state, we care mostly because we're in another addiction and that is we want everybody else to think we're nice when we're not. <laughs> Does that make sense? And you can't get pregnant in the sleep state? No, you can't get pregnant in the sleep state. Fortunately. Otherwise, there'd be a lot more pregnancies. <laughs> Yeah, it requires two. Pregnancy require, is a physic, it creates a physical body. It requires two physical bodies to be involved. Yep. Paige? Can I just clarify something that you just said then? Sure. That having a sexual relationship with anyone other than your soulmate damages both halves of the soul. Of course. So if you were married have you to never someone thought that for 60 before? years, yep. well, I have. But I wasn't sure, so yeah. you just answered the question that I had. Yeah, so if you've been, so continue the question. So if you've been with someone for 60 years. If you've been with someone for 60 years and mm -hmm. it turns out that they're not your soulmate, then there is going to be some collective soul damage that's occurred. In Correct. With the two partners. Correct, there is. Yep. Thanks. And even if it was an unknown, even if it was unknown. Anything that's out of harmony with truth, even if it's unknown, does cause a damage of some kind, if you think about it. It's like if you don't know the truth about you know, anything, even if you're ignorant and, and, and it's through no fault of your own, you still, you still have a negative effect by not knowing the truth on your life. And that applies definitely to the soulmate relationship. In, in fact, there's two relationships that it applies the most to. The first relationship is your relationship with God, and the second relationship is the relationship with the other half of yourself. That's, that's where most of our pain and suffering is actually revolving around. Yep. Karen? So that means that if you have sex with your soulmate but you don't know that they're your soulmate, you're still creating damage because you're having sex with someone who you don't know is, is your soulmate? If you're having sex with someone who is your soulmate but you don't know you, they're your soulmate, then you obviously are having sex with them for addictive emotional reasons. 
and doesn't addiction always cause damage to another person? So yes, but you've just happened to cause damage now. Instead of to causing it to two souls, you've just caused it to one. <laughs> that's, that's the only difference. <laughs> Does that make sense? Anytime you do something in addiction, even if it's with your soulmate, it's out of harmony with love and so therefore it has its compensatory effects. It's uh, going off the subject of sex now, but um, today in all the talks, um, I actually had a lot of trouble staying awake. Yep. And I thought that, that these subjects are things I really wanted to hear about and I really wanted to learn about. Yep. And yet I was really struggling sometimes. Who else had struggle? Quite a few. Yep. Okay. Why does that happen? You want to want to help me? Why, Maddie? You want to have a go? I think uh, right in that moment, my will's actually, I don't really want to hear this right now. Okay, well, that's po one possible. Or, or might, yeah. One sorry. possible is that, that you really don't, your real will is that you really don't want to hear it. That's one possible answer. Or, or it could be that it's bringing up some emotions that I don't want to feel. Correct. So that's, so it's again a will-based thing. I don't want to feel what this is bringing up for me, so I don't want to hear. So that's another one. What's another one? If we go straight behind. Um, I think that on, what Matthew said is true, but on top of that, because we have that feeling and we don't resist it, that spirits with us get involved and actually make us fall asleep. Very much so, yeah. In fact, many of the spirits who are with you at the moment know that if you apply the material that you learn this week, they will no longer be able to have a relationship with you. Now, for many of you, they have developed relationships with you over many years. They don't want to have to move home because you're home to them. You know, that's, you, you, they get all their, all their good feelings from you and, they, and many of the times they are actually physically connected to your body getting these feelings from you. And if you break these addictions, where do they go? They've got to go and find another person to formulate these kind of relationships with. And they don't want you to do that. And if, if they know that you're in codependent addiction with them, they can just go, oh, let's go to sleep. And off you go. Right? And if they know what the holes are inside of you to allow that to occur, they'll definitely do that. So that's another possible reason as to why it's occurring. So there's three possible reasons so far. None of them sound good, do they, unfortunately? <laughs> Any other reasons? Joy. Um, we can leave our body and another spirit can come in. Yes, so we can leave our body. Why would we leave our body? Um, because we don't want to feel, hear what's happening. We don't want to feel Correct. how I feel. Correct. So we don't want to feel or participate in what's actually happening. Yep. Can I ask a question about um, the spirits with Christiana and Graham? Yep. Um, did, I felt that maybe they were stirring the pot because they didn't want them to come here. Correct. Yeah. In, fact, in fact, almost every person that we have actually had to send home yeah. and to not come here yeah. has actually had spirit interference who didn't want them to come here in the first place. And were they women's spirits? And that's why Graham was wanting to comply with them, just like a uh, No, there's a mixture, but mostly women's spirits. Mostly. But there is one man with, with in their relationship who, who actually panders to women and wants well. Graham to pander to women, yes. Mm -hmm. But, but for every person, it's different, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Al? Um, back to the sleep state. Back to the future, yep. <laughs> Are there teachers like yourself in the spirit world teaching about what we're, what's going on Earth with us and how it's affecting our soul in the sleep state? Yes. So there's a, like a reverse thing. Yes. Are they similar to what these assistance groups are? Or? Uh, no, because, you, you know, they're only applicable during your sleep state. So, you know, they don't have a continuum, if you like, over days and days generally. Yeah. But also they're very much focused. See, here on Earth, when you make a decision to come to something like this, you're now here for eight days, you're trapped, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
And that's not strictly true because you've got your will and you can go at yeah, any time. Sure. But see, the majority of you would go, but yeah, I've paid my, you know, thousand bucks to the venue and, you know, I've got food here now and I'm here now, so I might as well stay and see how it goes, you know. Whereas in the sleep state, that's not how it works. It's driven totally by your desire. So if your desire at the moment in your sleep state is to go around and have a sex with as many women as possible, then it's highly unlikely you'd come to a venue. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make um, sense. And you'd yeah. only come if you really had a strong desire to, to listen to some truth. Now, there are many celestial spirits who are teaching truths about all these interactions between Earth and sleep state. And in fact, when you pass, one of the things that you will remember are these periods of time when you were educated about your life on Earth and what was going on. Of course... Because of the facade on earth, many of you have a struggle to remember the education. So that's a bit of a problem. But, but, and that's one reason why it's much better that we decided to come back rather than try to do all the education in the, in the spirit world. Because in the spirit world, it's difficult to do all the education and the people on earth remember it when yeah. they wake up. Just one other thing. Is there anybody that you have to report to in the spirit world? <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone you have to? <laughs> Not me, you. No, I mean you. Is oh. there anyone you have to? Um, yeah, the big G, I guess. The but, big G. Um, other than that, no, I guess it, not. Exactly. I just thought with the soul union thing that there's another development of another universe where there's counsel of how, how we're not progressing or are progressing on Earth. Because this is an experiment, as you first said, and that this hasn't ever, never happened in Earth's history before. So that's. Um, it's an interesting question you are. You sometimes ask interesting questions. <laughs> are. Do you realise what emotions are driving this question? Probably a, um, a spirit with me. Yeah. Well, and the spirit. What does the spirit believe? Um, the spirit about natural love and progression in that. Correct. And what does that spirit believe in the natural about natural love? They believe in a hierarchy of beings. Yeah, yeah. Do they not? Yeah, yep. true. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the motivation for the question. Is that is that they believe in a hierarchy of beings. So you're wondering whether there is a hierarchy of beings, you see. The reality is no, there is not a hierarchy of beings. However, the people who are in the greatest condition of love do have direction over what goes on in other places of the spirit world. And they are given that direction because every person who's in a good condition of love is given responsibility that, that mer is merited by their condition. Yeah, I, I do remember now that in the pageant messages. Yes. Yep. Yep. But the natural love spirits see that as a hierarchy. You see, whereas the spirits who are on the divine love path don't see that as a hierarchy, they just see it as the person who's more developed in love has a greater responsibility. And I notice with how you and Mary work that you're not trying to create a system to govern or control other um, man-made law systems. No. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, ever. And in fact, that's never going to occur. What we would like to see is that we disband all man-made law-based systems and accept all of God's systems. And God's systems are far more refined and far more difficult to actually uphold yeah. for many people on earth uh, than the man-made systems anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks for that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So uh, it, be aware that many of the questions that come about hierarchy are always related to spirits who believe in a hierarchy. And they don't believe in a hierarchy that's based upon love or condition. They believe in a hierarchy based on merit. Do you understand the difference? They, so in other words, you have to work your way to get to that place, is what they believe. And that's not the way it is. The way it is is that you receive love from God and the, love, the amount of love you've received from God determines what you're capable of doing. And so God gives you more responsibility the more you're capable of doing. And God will not give you responsibility that you're not capable of doing. And you, and you will be capable of doing anything as long as you've received some love from God to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So God's created it so all of you are capable. That's why I said in the first century, in my house there are many mansions, right? 
And there are also many of you, many my disciples come to me and said, what, what responsibilities will I have? And I said, some of you will have responsibilities over 10 cities. But it will depend upon the love that's in your soul. Yeah. Some of you will have responsibilities over 10 cities. You might even have responsibility over 10 cities while you're here on earth. You never know. But you won't see it as a power. You won't see it as a position of power. You won't see it as a position of governance. You won't see it at any of those things. You'll see it as a condition of love. Yep. And in the pageant message, it's interesting. There's some comments that are made there that say, they go along the lines of this. They go, um, Jesus, referring to myself, is our master. But I know you don't really understand what that means. Right? This is what they're saying. Because you don't understand what it means to have governance in the spirit world. Because all governance is based upon love. So we have responsibilities in the spirit world still. And uh, we carry out those responsibilities even though we're here with you. Yeah. And one day when you meet us in our true sense, you, you will see what's really going on, <laughs> shall I say. At the moment you don't really know what's really going on and that's okay. In your sleep state you know a bit more because you get to see a bit more of what's happening. Yeah. But see most of us in, on earth are really so, so much addiction we don't hardly see anything, right? <laughs> So it's something we've got to fix. Mm. Any other questions? Are we exhausting the questions now? If we go to Dave and then we go to Ray. You said a moment ago about if we have sex with somebody who's not our soulmate that we perpetuate um, soul damage. So does that mean that we should all be celibate? That you shouldn't? Should be celibate? Well, I was celibate in the first century until I met Mary, yes. Then I wasn't. <laughs> we had lots of sex then, didn't we both? <laughs> A person who's truly connected to their soul, Dave, will not have sex with anybody other than their soulmate because they just won't feel like having sex with anyone other than their soul. In fact, they won't even be able to be capable of having sex with anyone other than their soulmate physically. If you're truly connected to your soul, that's how it is. Yeah. Sorry, babe? You don't, what? You don't need willpower. You don't need willpower, no. That's right. So, so in other words, you, you don't need willpower to be celibate. You, 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 you automatically know you, you could not even be attracted to anyone other than your soulmate. So when I first, like I, in the first century, I was about 19 when I first realised that there was a soul, soulmate, right? Uh, I, it was a growing sensation from my childhood in the first century because what, what happened was I noticed everything seemed to come in pairs, you know, there was always the mating things going on with all the animals and everything, but, but also even, even with plants, there was usually a male and female plants, for example, a lot of the times, and it, there, was, there was this constant relationship between the two halves, and so I started feeling that, at a very young age, I was five years of age when I first had the concept that you know there's some kind of thing going on here. But it wasn't until I was 19 that I actually realised very firmly that there was another half of myself that I that I hadn't met yet. Right? And and I knew I, I knew after that that because I was open emotionally, I knew that when I did meet her, I'd know who she is straight away. And I also knew that I'd never have a relationship with anybody and I never did have a relationship with anybody um, until I met Mary in the first century. Yeah. Thank you. It was really good. I liked it. <laughs> really good. <laughs> a, lot, you know, a lot of people think that to be a good lover or to have a good sexual relationship you've got to have a lot of experience with all these different people and that's a whole heap of rubbish actually <laughs> what you've got to do is have a connection to your own soul and the connection to the other person's soul and the only way to do that purely the other person has to be a person who's the other half of you it makes sense doesn't it and 
So, so that's the real relationship. Yeah. Brings up lots of questions, doesn't it? The soulmate relationship. Yeah. Have you noticed that a lot of times we're really challenged when we start talking about soulmates? Like about all sorts of issues, sexual issues, moral issues, ethical issues, emotional issues. They all get triggered through, you know, coming to understand this term. Like even just the concept that God's created another half and I don't have a choice is pretty challenging for most people. Trust me, why would you want a choice when God has already created the perfect other half? Any choice you made would have to be worse than that. <laughs> why would you want a choice? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me, but <laughs> if you want to have a choice, that's fine. That's up to you. Now, where were we over here? With the spirits that are attached to our bodies, what happens to them when we go to the spirit world, when we go to sleep at night? Um, many of them, uh, because, see, the, your soul is the energy they're drawing off of in your body. Does that make sense? So when you go away from your body, oftentimes they can't remain as connected to your body because they're drawing energy through your soul. Your soul is the source of the energy of your spirit body and your physical body. And so that, and say so they would normally be in the spirit world or connected to another person under those circumstances. Not always, though. They, some can remain. It just depends on your openness to the connection. So some of them will stay near your body. Some of you, the reason why you're afraid to come back to your body is because there's all these spirits that surrounding your body all the time that you don't want to see. Children often have that. Children who wet their beds often have a large number of spirits surrounding them at the entrance and exit points of going to sleep and waking up. I often have a lot of spirits waking me up in yep. the night. I yep. have actually a lot of what I would think good spirit life experiences actually have lots of yeah, learning and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, then I get woken up by spirits. Like they bring me back mm -hmm. into my body and I'm uh, out of a good environment. Like I often dream about you guys or I'm like in situations that yep. are really positive, I feel. Yep. And they, and they draw you up, back yeah, yeah. to my body. And they're using your fear against you. Right. Does that make sense? Every time you notice them around your body, you're afraid, so you come back to your body to protect yourself and so forth. And, and there's a lot of things that goes on um, with our sleep and wake, waking times. You know, the time we're going to sleep and the time we're waking up, that influence how our spirits interact with us. Yeah. But, but remember, I talked to you at dinner about um, the biggest emotion driving you a lot of times is your fear... You're, 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 you're super sensitive to everybody about their feelings about, towards you, about what's going on around you. And that is one of the main reasons why you get drawn back to your body. Because you're super sensitive to the emotions of those spirits who are drawn to your body at the time you're away from it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So rather yeah. than staying with my desire, I go back to my Correct. Fear. You, you, you abdicate your desire, you go back to try to placate or please those people so they don't harm you yeah. yeah so oftentimes that's the case that our awake state emotions are actually playing out also in our sleep state yeah joy so why do there so many spirits hang around our body at the time of exit and entry because that's the time they can freak you out the most and Get, get as much, get as, get a lot of the establishments of addictions, all those kind of reasons. Yeah, we think about it. Um, for the majority of us, how many of you have trouble sleeping? Oh, quite a lot, eh? Hey? Yeah. Do you know why you have trouble sleeping? Because you don't want to go to the spirit world. Why? Why don't you want to go? Because you, because you, you're obviously freaked out about something that's going on there. It makes sense, doesn't it? So you don't want to go. All right, so if you allowed yourself to feel about what's going on there, you, you might find a lot more restful night. You might be able to sleep. There's a, there's a lot going on between, that, between the switch between awake and sleep. Because that's the time when we start to use our spirit sight. So when, when we leave our body, we're now using our spirit's sight 
and our spirit senses. We are now able to see things that you couldn't see in your physical body that you now can see quite readily. Now, for most of you, that freaks you out because surrounding many of you, there's still a large amount of addiction, so therefore there's a large amount of spirits who are surrounding at times who are, who are harmful or, or who look terrible or are scary and you're frightened of them and things like that. And this causes problems with the transition. Hmm. Many mornings when I wake up, I feel as if I've been transcribing all night. Surely I'm not doing it all day and all night. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not, you're not doing it all night. Love. <laughs> As I think sometimes in the sleep state, you'd probably like to be doing it rather than the other things you're doing. <laughs> yeah. You've got to remember that in your sleep state, most of the time you'll be, if you've got heavy addictions, you'll be trying to meet those addictions. So... Unfortunately, you know, for many of us that means that we probably wouldn't be that pleased with our sleep state, our real sleep state life, you know, for many of us. Many of us are getting attacked in our sleep state by the people who we've tried to get rid of in our awake state. So, you know, family, people who used to attack you, so you got rid of them out of your life, well often they're still attacking you in your sleep state because you haven't dealt with the emotion yet. Does it make sense? It's only when you deal with the emotion that things will really change. That's why, as Mary talked to you today, the real soul will is the thing to change. Not, not the pseudo, you know, the willpower, the pseudo will, the fake will, the thing that you're wanting to do is not real. But the real thing is the feeling going on inside. So if you want to be angry with somebody, you know when you go to sleep and you want to be angry with somebody when you're awake, you go to sleep, you're going to probably go to them and be angry with them. You're going to yell and scream at them and abuse them and carry on. Right? And if they're another person on earth who's still awake, what would you do? You'd probably go there in your sleep body, in your spirit body, and do that with them. Yell and scream at them and carry on and get frustrated that they don't hear you half the time. Right? You'll do that too. If that's what you feel like doing, that's what you're going to do. This is why the feelings have to change because it's only when the feelings inside of the soul that change, when they change, that's when you get the positive effects of real growth, not before then. So, so this is what we're trying to encourage you this week. Make real change. See where you really are now and then decide to make real change. Don't fake it until you make it. There's no such thing like that on the way to God. You, you can use all those terminologies with the natural love path and to be honest with you, they don't even work there. Right? But, but pointless work using them with God. God knows everything you do, knows all of your intentions, all of the real feelings you have. So why not just be your real self and then decide whether you want to change that real self into someone who's more loving? That would be good. I have this false belief that I don't have much anger until I have to place a call with Telstra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it happened last week and I was, you know, not that I ranted and raved, but I felt, wow, I am angry here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The real feelings are often quite easy to see because we often get triggered into them because the law of attraction works perfectly. But it's our denial of them and our desire for the facade that keeps us in this place where we think we are doing much better than we really are. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I've, I'm talked out now. So we'll see you tomorrow, shall we? Yeah. Good day.